Warning, this video contains gameplay footage from an average Dota 2 player. None of the players in this video are professionals and should not be treated as such. Use caution in attempting any of these item builds or hero selections in ranked play. Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Trips, and today we're going to be looking at uh, an Earthshaker game that I played. I do want to let you guys see what was drafted and what was banned. This is a uh, captain's mode game that I played, just ranked captain's mode. Um, this is a really fun game that I played. And it seemed like everyone actually had teamwork and uh, good communication. So this game is really fun. Uh, I don't remember how the other side did. I do remember... I think the Tide did pretty well. I remember he was kind of a beast. But besides him, um, nothing sticks out to me yet in this game. We can kind of take a look around. And that was the final pick, the Centaur. I do end up picking up the Earthshaker, like I said, and I can skip ahead a little bit. Just wanted to see you guys, or I'll let you guys see what was banned out. All right, here we go. On the dire side, we have a Ogre Magi free camera, please. We have an Ogre Magi, uh, Slark, and Skyrath, I believe, safe lane, and then they have a tied off with Kunkka. Or Kunka mid. Solo top centaur. That is a sweet weapon, dude. Can't even see it. Solo DP. And then a tri line of Spectre, Earthshaker, and Witch Dukta. Pretty standard stuff, tri lines, you know. Anything special? Let's, let's take a look at these item builds. We kind of. Uh, lackluster take a look at them sometimes. There is a pulled tango, which I believe she might need one more. Depends on how fast she gets her bottle. Um, good. He's probably going tranquils. Myself, I went really greedy because I was fortunate enough that Witch Doctor did buy both, um, the Observers and the Courier. So, I wanted to get a fast boots, but I felt like I wanted one more tango. Or, uh, one more clarity. So I went with, I believe I, did I go with two or three? I went with two. Um, because what I feel like Earthshaker is in the beginning of the game is just a walking fissure. Which isn't bad. He's just, that's literally all he is. So you don't really need to be, you just need to watch your positioning. You don't need to be, there's no way you're going to harass them. So um, that's why I do stack and pull and let Witch Doctor lane with Spectre to give Spectre some space to farm. Um, real fast. It looks like... Oh, they split it. I was about to be like, how the hell did they do that? Uh, looks like Slark's going to be going for the poor man's. Kunkka went super greedy and just has no... Nothing. No stats. No boot. No... <laughs> I mean, he will be getting his fast bottle. Hopefully he can get a rune off of it. He wastes the one tango. Um, other than that, Skywrath going with the circle. It Maybe he's going to be doubling on Null Talisman. Because Skywrath's harass damage is insane. Um, with his Q, it scales almost like, um, you know, like things like Centaur's Return and what else scales? At least in this game, I know there's Centaur's Return, Centaur's Stampede, Pudge's Rot, or um, uh, Dismember with Strength or with the Agonims, stuff like that. It's basically you're allowed to build other than damage to scale yourself into the late game. <clears throat> Spectre, I think, ends up going a fast radiance this game. So it feels like pretty quiet lanes right now. Spectre is, is out farming. Oh, they're pretty even, actually. They're pretty even in CS. Um, DP does have double, but double meaning three. Um, tied, this is where Tied, he tried to come to see if we pulled, which we did, and unfortunately he gets cast, and it's going to bounce to the creeps. I think it only stunned him one time, and this is where I was like, no, Spectre, Dagger, bro, but it's alright. He took a lot of damage, and it looks like he had no other regen, and he didn't even place his ward yet, so um, he's kind of messing up a little bit, but he is level 2. He's doing... Well, and experience farming. Looks like we're going to get a rotation, maybe, or just 
placing some wards with protection. Letting Slark get some of that solo EXP that he desperately needs. Centaur doing all right, level three, but oh, five CS. That's real. That's real nice. Slark seems to be pulling ahead a tiny bit, not something crazy, but a tiny bit in the CS lead. Uh, Witch Doctor looks like he has an Invis rune, trying to set up a gank on this Tide Hunter. He has one level of Kraken shell, so I don't know if it's. Oh, there's the dagger. Do they get it? Spectre needs one, one, one auto. Damn. Ends up living with, I'm guessing, around 12 health. Such luck, much wow. So I'm just going to go back. Um, <coughs> well, fortunately, I wasn't in position. Um, I remember running up there and just barely being out of range for my fissure. Let's scale this bad boy back a little bit. Just so we can get a little more of an eye on the battlefield. Uh, missing a torrent here, looks like Kunkka. Give it, doing some harass. That Tidebringer. Has his bottle. She has her bottle. Runes haven't spawned for four minutes yet. And we're going to be making a... This is where we called for a rotation. Smoke gank rotation. Um, a lot of people think that mids should solely gank. But you can help your mid out so much by ganking. Right there. Easy. First blood. <coughs> Excuse me. And... I mean, it helps. It's just... Basically, just one, almost won that lane for her. Um, she really doesn't need to worry. I'm going to grab this haste. And I wanted to make something of it, but I was really low health. Um, I sat around it for a minute, and I was like, should I take this? Should I take this? Should I take this? It looks like DP tried to go top. She could have actually used this haste rune in her bottle. Um, but I asked. Nobody said anything. So that's my reasoning. I take the haste. I run up over here. And I'm like, all right, I want to get some type of advantage on him. I want to, and let's see if we can, I don't think we end up doing anything here yet. But let's do something we haven't done yet. Um, player perspective, myself. There we go, there's the mouse. <clears throat> so let's take a look at myself and just how I'm playing currently during the game. Uh, this is a game I feel comfortable showing because I did I did pretty well, I felt like. So what I did there was pulled the camp, stacked it. Um, at least I hope I stacked it, yep. And then what, is, what this is going to do is you're going to pull at 512 and it's going to pull the wave. And instead of just a single pull, like you see somebody do, some people do, a single pull is not going to clear out the entire wave. Especially if it's a cannon wave, but you should never pull a cannon wave. Um, it's not going to delete the wave like you want it to. The reason for pulling, along with getting some CS on the support from the actual jungle creeps, is you want to just deny the offlaner experience. You want to say, no, you're not getting my creeps, so you're just losing experience. Um, it's a lot better than just you know right click denying because there's literally they're not even in the area uh, when the creeps die most of the time. I want to see where he placed this ward. Oh, what's up, dude? And boom, right there. Okay, <coughs> pretty easy ward. Um, we never end up picking it up though. Uh, I was playing pretty greedy, and I was like, I don't want to buy sentries, and I'm already uh, level 3, and I did have a stack, so I'm just going to clear the stack, uh, maybe pull through, and that'll be all, about be it for 3 minutes, because that's what the ward's going to do. It's going to block the camp. Uh, if you don't know the camp, if there is a unit yourself, um, I think the courier can actually block it if it's uh, directly on top of it, and wards both sentry and observer. What it does is it blocks the camp, so the next uh, the next camp that's like wanting to spawn at the zero minute mark at every minute, it won't spawn. Even if the camp is completely empty besides the ward or what I listed. Um, and I was like, alright, I'm going to buy a smoke centaur. You got your ultimate, buddy. I'm going to come top. I'm going to buy a TP, and we're going to kill the slark. He went Midas, so we need to punish this. He's doing really well in farm right now. He has 42 CS, uh, and he has a Midas. He got the Midas, I think, around six minutes. I don't uh, recall. I just missed it, probably. Um, but what I want to do is I want to keep ganking. I want to keep moving around the map. I got both stuns up, um, and I need a Blink Dagger as fast as possible. 
Some people like to go the mana boots because you do run out of mana really fast, but I feel like if you get some pretty excellent ganks off, uh, you can snowball pretty hard. It looks like I might have... Uh, if something would have happened mid, this would have been a mistake, uh, wasting my TP, but luckily nothing did. She backed off and she lived. So we're coming up here, and we're talking, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to sit back, and he asked me if I'm ready. Make sure... Uh, I see a lot of people come to gank, and they just run in. Just, all right, I'm coming to gank, and then just run in. I mean, yeah, it's all right, I guess, but if the next person isn't ready, don't just assume. Like, <laughs> it's it's easier to work as a team than it is to be like, dude, you should have just known. You should have known. Um, but we do get this kill. Easy. Pretty easy kill. Um, luckily, Centaur did have those tangos. I don't think it's Lark. <coughs> do I lose power? Okay, there it is. Slark did. Oh no, that's Tide Hunter. Slark did not have a TP, so. Alright. Move my extra mouse away. <coughs> oh my gosh. Nothing to drink. Um. But alright. So yeah, we're taking a little bit of a look at perspective. I do want to. Go back to some free cam for a minute. I think. I don't know if anything really happens for right now. Let's take a look in their jungle. Um, Skyrath is trying to stack this. So like I said before, oh, Slark. Oh, Slark. Nope, Slark made it not stack. Um, but like I was explaining on the other side, the stacking is you're going to just the complete opposite of putting a ward in a camp to block it. Is you're going to pull the creeps out of the camp. And there's probably like, I could be off here, but it's something like that. And anything in this area on the map will make the creeps not spawn again. So what you want to do is you want to take these guys and you want to run them up towards here. This is my preferred path is up on the right side of this tree up just straight. And I usually do it at 54 if there's one, if it's just the camp itself. Um, 53 if it's anything higher than one camp so it's two camps um, a lot of times they run into each other and it kind of throws off the timing a little bit but basically what that does is you're just gonna stack the camp and um, instead of somebody clearing one camp and then having to wait a minute when somebody finally does decide to come and be like alright I'm gonna clear this camp uh, you just saw the camp spawn at the 10 minute um, once finally somebody does come and clear the camp there could be two three four stacks here and it'll just increase their GPM, their gold per minute. Really, it'll it'll help them out a lot. Because unfortunately, uh, I don't remember exactly. I do remember reading about it. There is there has been a nerf to the jungle, and um, it could have been a year ago. Um, I don't think it was in a super recent patch. But what that basically means is that farming the jungle, while yes, it's consistent, and you're consistently getting gold. If you were using that time to farm in a lane, the lane would offer you more experience and more gold. Um, that's if you're getting every single last hit on every single wave and stuff like that. Um, so you just got to try your best to uh, last hit. What is Slark doing here? Um, it seems like he's trying to get this DP. I wonder if he's going to actually get her. This is a good you know, DP tactic. Just keep your ult up. Keep running. And unfortunately, she didn't try to silence him. Uh, maybe she wouldn't be able to get the kill. I think he, he got a lot of stats off of that. He had nine stats off of that. So he was doing decent damage, but... Hmm. So I'm still up here with Centaur. I was like, alright, dude, I need I need experience. I don't want to ruin Specs game for her. Uh, so I left bot lane. This is them pushing. I think we decided to trade this tower to them. And Spec got out of there. Spec was like, alright, I'm almost to my relic, which is the first part of her Radiance. And she didn't want to die. She didn't want to fight. She knew she really didn't have anything, which is smart. Um, it's smart of her. And this is what I mean. It's completely fine to go in the jungle and do some farming if you know you just can't be in the lane. If there's nothing you can do, you can't just do nothing, so go farm. You're the hard carry. You need a lot of gold. She catch, She uh, uh, caught up to Slark, surpassing. I mean, I guess they're about the same. One doesn't really count. But he does have that minus advantage over her. Uh, he's going to take a little bit to pay it off, but who knows? Maybe it'll pay off. And Sark seems like he's trying to just... Maybe he's just going back to base to regen. 
And Ogre sees a regen rune. Ogre really doesn't have much right now. Let's take a look at their wards. Uh, we have a sentry up here. Ward there. And I think, yeah, those are the only wards on the map right now. Roche is still up, guys, just in case you were wondering. Uh, Tide? He looks like he's going back. Oh, looks like there's going to be kill up on the Skywrath. Pretty easy. I'm guessing Centaur, yep, he has his blink, so he definitely just blinked, stunned. And then the Haunt with the Double Edge, right? Double Edge? Double Edge? Yep, okay. It took me a minute, but I thought of it. Pretty easy kill. And we're going to press our advantage once again. Easy Exorcism. They're going to try to teleport in the Tide, and here comes the Skywrath as well. Tide gets silenced, amazing, and then just killed. And if they don't have that uh, Ravage, their team fight is basically nothing, especially after they miss the boat. Um, but for anyone who was wondering, if you do not know, I'm going to explain things like this. Uh, when you saw them teleporting, these little colors, I don't know why that moved my camera, but um, what I saw was this tealish blue color and the yellowish color. When they teleport in, there's a ring around the teleport animation, and whatever color that is matches who's coming in so that you can know who's coming in. Um, especially if you're, you know, if you got two or three people up there and Skywrath TPs in, and then you look around and no one else is TPing in, you know, you can just collapse on him. He just wasted a TP. Fortunately, here, um, we chased the Kunkka. Um, I was too busy talking. Um, but we chased the Kunkka and. Oh, nice Ravage. We chased the Kunkka, and I got a Fissure off, and then I used Echo Slam just because I didn't want to get him away. It was, we did, I think it, I don't even think it bounced at all. It just did the only damage. I was just on the other side of the Fissure, and um, I could catch him with the AoE of it. Uh, and just that small, minute amount of damage actually killed him. But unfortunately, we did lose our Slark, or our Slark. We lost our DP in that. So we have a 1-2 tower advantage. We do have the DP, so the exorcism is amazing for pushing. Looks like the Spectre's going to get probably 15-16 minute radiance. Not horrible. Not the not ideal. Um, you want to probably get it around 12-13 minutes if possible. But like I said, they pushed 4 bot and she wasn't able to farm enough. <clears throat> Looks like Kunkka's, Kunkka's not doing too well for himself, in my opinion. Uh, it looks like he might be going Chrysalis, or I hope he's not going Battle Fury at this point. Tide's got his blink, which is all he really needs. Skyrath still has nothing, but I'm pretty sure he's been buying wards. And yep, there's the 15, 15, 20 minute, or 15 minute, 20 second radiance. Amazing. We see the ogre get caught out. We see other people on the map. Easy pick off, just... Uh, just a good call, basically. We started playing really aggressive. We knew we had the advantage. We understood that Spectre's just going to farm and haunt in when she needs to. And uh, we're just going to basically fight as four. Even though Centaur... I think Centaur went top because they, were start they started to push our tower and we didn't want to give it to them. Our mid's being pushed to the Kunkka. And I think I end up teleporting in here. So let's take, let's, come on, yep, I do end up teleporting in here. And I'm like, I am not getting hit, they're like, back up dude, back up, he's got a double damage, just give it up, give it up. I'm not even paying attention to the map at this point, and I was just like, I just want this kill, he's not touching me, he's not auto attacking me. Luckily Witch Doctor comes in, gets the Maledict and the ulti off. And actually, now back watching this, I remember them dying so immediately that I thought the Witch Doctor just popped his ult for no reason. Um, but now watching it, obviously, there was at least three or four ticks of his ultimate that went off. So once again, just a nice play. Um, good. I mean, like, I had trust in my team that they were going to follow up on me. I was going a little bit balls deep, but sometimes you got to make plays happen. So, um, I'm going to take it off player perspective. This is just boring stuff. Me walking back to base, if I can get my mouse back. Uh, looks like somebody just died. Who just died? Witch Doctor? They didn't really use anything. So it's okay. 
Doesn't really look like their team is stacking at all. Looks like there's a stack right there. I remember asking which doctor to stack. So there's one stack so far. Which is nice, especially with the Radiance on the Spectre. Uh, the AoE and her Dispersion, which is... Uh, her Dispersion is if she takes damage, she does percentile damage back to everyone in an AoE around her. Oh, there she goes. Spectre is such a good hero in my opinion. Very, very, very undervalued. I mean, I think she's had her... She, I think she shines, but... Um, I don't know. Sometimes in pubs, people don't like her. See a duke out, and it looks like Spectre doesn't really want to fight. She just wants to get out. Um, and here comes us. Slark kind of wasted everything, and is just going to die for it. And actually, Spectre ends up killing him with the Radiance. And unfortunately, she turned back. So if you watch, she walked this way, and then she ended up trying to come back down into the trees instead to cut the tree line so that he didn't have vision. But I think because she cut the tree line, he had the range to gush her. Not the most horrible fight, but we got two for our carry. Which carry shouldn't die, but it's not horrible. And then we're going, and we're like, all right, we have exorcism. They don't have ravage, and we could easily take this tier two. Tier 2 is just going to melt, and I think we lost our mid tower, but a tier 1 for a tier 2, I'll take that shit any day. And this is what I mean. What I mean by taking it, um, sometimes you're not going to save a tower. No matter how bad you want to, you're not going to save that tower. And TPing in, leaving your team uh, down a man to maybe TP in to just die, or TP in to a tower exploding and then you just walk back to base, that's a waste of 100 gold. Um, a waste of your rotation time, and what if, uh, I guess we can't play in what ifs, but I don't value it because uh, a fight could easily break out. And I'm going to see some action for myself teleporting up here. She's going to get the Yules, and boom, stunned, silenced, and easy kill. There's nothing you can do at this point to get away from us, and oh, ho, 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 buddy. I remember that, and I was like, oh, I need a TP, I need a TP. But I don't have the mana. If I would have waited, actually. Oh, I didn't even have the cooldown. Blink out. Live with 25 health. YOLO. Looks like Witch Doctor got a little bit... Oh. Oh. Centaur coming in to save the day. And Tide tried to pop the... Tide tried to pop a smoke to hide himself. Um, but I don't... I, I highly doubt that. Gets rid of, mal gets rid of the maledic damage. <coughs> Seriously, Kanka. Kanka's farm is not too good, in my opinion. Um, he has 70 last hits. I mean, he's not doing horrible, but DP and Spectre are doing a lot better. Net worth. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, Kanka's underneath the uh, Centaur. I think that's mainly just because the Centaur has been in a lot of kills. He's been doing really well. He's through 1 and 5 right now. Whereas... Oh, Witch Doctor's on top, bro. Uh, yeah, Kunkka's on the bottom of the leaderboard right now. 0-4-0. Oh, oh. Not having a good game. He might be, you know, high in a little bit of numbers, but... Not so in the net worth. And what matters besides net worth? Not anything. Not anything. Oh, and this is boom. Shaka Laka. See you later. Tide waits the ravage, and we're just gonna go on you, bro. Um, I think he ends up being able to blink out, and I'm like, I have no mana. See you later. I'm gonna go grab my. What did I end up building? I don't remember exactly. Uh, but yeah, opportunity taking it, just taking it. I, uh, I think I fissured right there, like across here, to try to save the DP, and they got oh, those three people stunned. There is sometimes you just need to jump on the opportunity, and I could have jumped that on on that opportunity, got ravaged, and nobody followed up. And that would have been my bad because I thought my team would have followed up. Um, but luckily, you know, sometimes you just gotta trust people, gotta make the plays happen. I think I went, yep, I went for the ring of perseverance because I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go refresher. 
Like, I'm so far ahead at this point. I have so much... Let's, what is my net worth at this point? Yeah, my net worth... I'm catching up to the Kunkka. And the offlane tide is below me. Offlane tide, he's not having a good day. Um, but yeah, I'm catching up to the Kunkka. 800 behind the Kunkka, and... A little bit of shit talking. I think that's pointless. Um, but yeah. Looks like Witch Doctor's looking for a stack here. Good Witch Doctor. Um, good support. Looking out for his team. You don't need the farm supports. Give it to your team. Remember that? I say that and I farm, so. But, for the most part, especially in the early game, if you can get your carry snowballing a little bit, it helps out in the long run. It looks like uh, Spectre's going to be going for the Manta. Slark's going to be going for the... Whoa, why is he going for that? And I saw this and I went in and I was like, easy pick off. <laughs> uh, reliving this game. But it looks like Slark is going to go for the Desolator. I don't know why. I don't... None of... Oh, I guess... I guess the Blade Mail, but not really. No one besides Centaur has high armor. At least incredibly high. Hits the Torrent. Nothing special, though. Let me back this out. Playing in that camera view doesn't feel that tight, but when you rewatch it, it's a little bit tight. Especially you want to see things that, you know, you might not have seen before. Or like the outside screen perspective, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Oh, blade mail, blade mail! <laughs> Almost taken out. The Skywrath, get a good uh, uh, ravage off, runs. Oh, the... Witch Doctor narrowly avoids the boat. Unfortunately, DP goes in and er, dies. Centaur is going to try to stun to help his team get away. Witch Doctor 1v1 the Slark with his ultimate. And I came into the fight, I believe, a little bit late, and I didn't know if I could do anything. I tried to tell this Witch Doctor, Mana Boots, dude, Mana Boots, Mana Boots, I'll echo, I'll echo. He didn't do it, and I didn't really have anything to offer. I mean, I guess I could have went in and right-clicked, but meh. So many people getting away with low health. I can't believe that. I didn't realize they were even that low. If I, if I would have had... Yeah, I just got the mana for the Echo. Damn. That could have even been bigger. That might have been game right there. Let's take a look at the map again. We got a sentry down here. We got a observer on the high ground. This is when we tried to push high ground a little bit. Um... So what we do is, yes, I play a greedy four roll. Um, I'd go for a huge item first, especially on Earthshaker. You need that blink dagger, man. You need that blink dagger. Uh, blink dagger, a blink daggerless Earthshaker is. He's a bad Earthshaker. He's in a bad spot, man. If you can't get Earthshaker before t or blink dagger before 20 minutes on a four roll Earthshaker, you probably just lost the game. And I could be wrong. Yes, you could build four staff. You could build heavy movement speed or something, but Blink Dagger just trumps it all. It just helps your positioning out so much. But anyway, so what I was saying was, um, I got boots, and then I went for the Blink Dagger, and after the Blink Dagger, I was like, alright, Witch Doctor, I'll buy wards, you build an item now. So I'm saying, <clears throat> you bought wards for the first half of the game, you let me get my item, now you can um, start building your item, and help basically bring that other support up to up to par with the rest of the team and um, be able to capitalize on things. It does look like there's a smoke ink going on, so let me... I just missed that. We do get torrent boated and I think I died here. Ugh. So disheartening. I was like, no. My perfect game. My perfect game! Watching the Kunkka die. Slark goes in. Exorcism was... I mean, I guess because the tide came in now, but <clears throat> exorcism. I'm oh, just picking, picking them off one by one, one by one. Exorcism into the tower now, and we don't need to watch myself, watch myself. And this is exactly what you need to do. Um, I've said this before in previous videos. You you just had a team fight right here, right? And you popped exorcism and. 
I mean, she's not a low health. She's kind of half mana. But even if you were a little bit low, a lot of their heroes are down. You just push a tower. Take a tower. Towers are so important. Towers are the objective of the game. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of people in lower MMRs just, you know, try to get kills over and over and over and over and over. And I'm not talking about trying to get a pick off and then push your advantage. I'm talking about literally just get a kill and then go back to the jungle and farm. That's it. Um, contrary to popular belief, it's not a uh, team deathmatch game. So why, yes, you technically can win by getting, you know, 30 kills for your team because you're just going to be so strong that you're going to win every fight and eventually they're going to push. Like, you're going to push into their towers. But um, I think it's a lot better and a lot easier to push your team's advantage uh, when you win a team fight get a couple pickoffs you know all right they don't have this cooldown they don't have that cooldown so learning cooldowns is really good um calling times you know if somebody ravages and you die in the fight hit uh y your chat wheel is y is the uh, i think it's the default or it might be mine but you hit that chat wheel and you have current time on there and then you say ravage and you know that even though you died, unfortunately, you can't do anything for your team, but you can keep um, you can keep timers for your team. You know, black hole, ravage, just huge cooldowns. Um, I mean, chronosphere is okay, but if he gets an agonist, it's like a 60 second cooldown. Other short cooldowns, uh, exorcism is okay with 145 seconds, but haunt is anything anything I think under 100 might not be the best to keep something like witch doctor ult maybe but um it still helps i guess but it's just not as relevant because the next time you fight it's pretty uh more than likely they're gonna have their cooldown up if it's low enough is what i'm trying to say but if you know that you know if you're pushing right now and we're like they have ravage we probably shouldn't fight um it would help you out knowing that extra information but we get an exorcism off. Unfortunately, Tide did really nothing with his Ravage. And I feel like at this point, it's just an uncoordinated mess. And us being far ahead and pushing our advantage, we have a lot of control. And we capitalized. And that's what we did. We won the game. Uh, we got, you know, good pickoffs. And then we capitalized. Because... You might think, all right, I have, I'm Spectre, I have Radiance and Manta. Wait, I need my heart. Um, I need a Vanguard. I need BKB. I need something. Like, I'm just going to go back to the jungle and farm. You guys can push without me. There's no point. You're so far ahead at this point that if you can get a tower, you just win the game. You don't need to farm for 60 minutes to, you know, have six slots and then be like, all right, guys, now we can win. I'm done. Um... If you have the advantage, just win. That's it. It's as simple as that. I'm going to see a boat land on the centaur. And it looks like he's going after the low health witch doctor. Spectre's going to try to zone them a little bit. Going to get a cask off. Tide's going to jump in on the witch doctor just because he knows he can campalize. And Spectre's going a little bit deep. Gets X, but easily can kill this Kunkka. I don't want to focus on it too much because I want to see this tide battle with the DP. they both here. And I'm like, I want to help, but I really don't have anything besides a, um enchant totem. And now I see they're grouped up. Spectre comes back in, gets an enchant totem on both of them, kills the tide, and then we just single out the ogre, and it's going to be an easy cleanup. Here comes the Slark, lands a pounce on me, and I'm like, oh shit, I might die here. I get the enchant totem off uh, just to stun him, and Spectre starts chasing. He gets a little scared, and I blink in front of his pounce. Um, if you know that a Slark is running away, his main getaway tool is going to be the pounce. Uh... I mean, either Pounce or Ulti. He, if he gets far enough away for you, he can have the passive on the Ulti to run faster. But um, if you have a Blink Dagger, you know, you can survive or you don't really care about giving your life. You can, you know, know what abilities your enemy has and know how to exploit um, fighting against them. Is basically what I'm trying to get at. <clears throat> I think I do end up dying here. <laughs> Get a little bit, uh, get a little bit of risque. DP leaves me alone. I get silenced and die. Just a little bit out of position. Mistake on my part. 
going to see the divine rapier coming out on the specter. I think she's just playing with the team now. Or, um, toying with them is rather what I meant. Because she knows she can kill anything. She doesn't need the divine. She's just... And they wanted a fountain dive, but like, if you give Kunkka a divine rapier, that's like it's possible for them to come back. Especially because he has a crystalis shadow blade. Ugh, gross. Um, don't build shadow blade. That's if you learn anything, don't build shadow blade. Unless you know exactly why you're building the item, don't just build it because of the stealth. Why is my reasoning uh, that I don't favor the stealth? Because it's, I think it's like a three hundred or three thousand gold item. Uh, uh, this is what I do. There we go. So I want, yep, three thousand gold to be countered by two hundred gold, one hundred and eighty gold, depending on how you look at it. I ended up chasing this tide into the fountain uh, just to kind of bully him, just because I thought it was funny. I knew we were going to win the game, and I was basically just clowning around. But, um, a pretty solid win. Maybe I, it was a little bit one-sided uh, at a certain point, but that's why we didn't drag it out. Um, we won. We capitalized, like I said, and a nice clean game. Good game, everyone, all around. It was fun. I, mean, I don't I don't think that they performed horribly. Um, it looks like Tide was trying to go... <laughs> let, me re let me pause this. It looks like tr Tide was trying to go... Maybe Shiva's? Or, I hope not Sheepstick. Um, Slark should not have built the Midas. Uh, trying to look for something fast. I think maybe they had a little bit too many mana boots. Ogre and Skyrath need the mana, though. And Kunkas Farm could have been a little bit better. I, I like the new, the new build, the Blink Dagger, instead of the uh, Shadow Blade on Kunka, because you can X yourself, Blink in, auto attack, and then you'll get your splash damage, and then you just pull back out. You can continuously do that. But I'm not going to rant here. You see the results. You see how we played. Um, you learned a little bit on pulling and stuff that I talked about. So if you liked anything that I said here tonight, um, anything at all, or you want to see future videos like this, you know, you want to keep seeing me do some replay commentary, uh, maybe I'll do some live commentary, but I like to focus on the game when I play. Uh, you can go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, you know, put me on your favorites. Maybe you can share this to a friend. Uh, but, you know, all that stuff helps me out, and I will see you guys on another show.